Hello, this video is another video in a series on how to rebuild a Merc Cruiser 5.7 V8 engine. Um, in this video, I'm going to show you uh, all the parts that have been purchased so far to rebuild a uh, 5.7 Vortec. It's right, approximately 1996 to 1999 uh, 5.7 liter engine. Um, the customer currently has a uh, 5.0 liter engine, approximately, it's a Vortec also, approximately the same year, I think in 1998. Um, so a lot of the parts from the 5.0 engine, especially the accessories, alternator, power steering, or excuse, yeah, power steering pump, um, things like that, the accessories on the outside engine will bolt onto the 5.7, no problem. Um, it's the internals that will be different on a 5.7, especially the pistons and the crankshaft. Uh, I'm not sure about the rods, but uh, I'm going to use the rods that came out of the 5.7 anyway. So. Um, so what I'm going to do is show you the parts that I purchased and uh, give you some tips and tricks, uh, kind of tools of the trade on how to save money. So we'll start with the pistons. So this is a box of eight pistons, and here's the label. Um, the seal power 423 DCP .030. The .030 means they're 30 thousandths uh, larger than stock or overbore. Um, and in a previous video, I discussed uh, that uh, uh, I'm having the engine board to exactly 4.030 inches because the piston bore or the piston skirt is undersized to give you the proper clearance uh, per Mer Cruiser. So I'll refer you to that video for more discussion on piston wall clearance. But for now, let's discuss these pistons. So the piston itself has two part numbers listed on the H423 DCP, H640 DCP. And the difference is the 423 is uh, what you order when you're ordering a set of eight for V8. And the 640 is what you order when you're ordering six for a V6. Um, the the 5.7 and the 4.3 use these, use these, have the same bore and use the same, they don't use the same rod, but they uh, basically use the same piston. Um, so you, when you're looking at prices, look up the prices for either one and just buy two more of the V6 pistons or buy them one at a time and maybe you'll get a better price. The, the piston, these pistons tend to, the prices tend to fluctuate wildly. Um, about a month ago, I could get a set of eight for about hundred and, I think $104 from uh, Summit. Uh, then I recently looked, when I was ready to purchase, I looked at Summit again, they'd gone up to 220 nine dollars or something like that for a set of eight which i said holy cow that's it seems a little bit like prowse gouging how can they sell them for 104 one week and the next next time you look they're 220 229 dollars something doesn't seem right so anyway i held off on purchasing at that time um, um looked a little harder and then uh i found the 420 i can't remember if it's 640 or 423 but i found uh 423s purchased in single units on Rock Auto for a, approximately $11 a piston. So I bought these pistons, eight pistons, for 88 bucks. I, pro I got them for approximately $11 a piece. So, like I said, the price of the pistons fluctuates wildly. Um, by the way, I said this engine was a 1996 to 1999 uh, Vortec. And the way I find pr parts is I look on Rock Auto for the year and vehicle, year, engine size, whatever. And that's how I find my part numbers. Once I get the part number from Rock Auto, and I use Rock Auto because their, their search system is super efficient. Summit, honestly, Summit Racing is, uh, let me back up. I get my parts primarily from Rock Auto, Summit Racing, and Northern Auto Parts. I, I rotate between those three, uh, depending on who's got the least, least cost. I look at Jags, but Jags always seems to have the higher price. They say they price match, but don't play games. If you want to, if you want to compete with Summit, look on Summit's website, see what the price is, and set your price the same as same as they do. But don't when you say price match, you're you're basically uh, trying to rip people off and let them do the work to find out what the right price is. So anyway, um, so like I said, um, I got these off of Rock Auto for approximately eleven dollars a piston, and um, the uh, let me think here. Oh, back away. By the way, the uh, like I said, this is for a Vortec. So if you look up the 1997, 98, for example, 5.7 liter Vortec Chevy truck, 5.7, you'll see that this part number is not the part number they recommend. They say, I think it's an H, I want to say H857, something like that. 
So I did a little research and found out that the um, this piston, the height from the center of the wrist pin to the top of the piston is the same on the one from the 98 Vortec to this. This piston is not the 98. This is like a, say a 1993, 1990, whatever. So this piston uses what's called um, American ring sizes. It's not metric. So the, this ring size, I believe, is I want to say it's five, not five sixteenths. That'd be too much. Um, I'm trying to remember, maybe it's five thirty seconds. I can't remember. But the dimension for this ring and that ring is the same, and it's an American number. And then this one is double those two. So um, you can see they're kind of wide. So that's American size rings or, or imperial unit rings. The 1998 Vortec has a different, has a narrow ring and a narrow ring and even even narrow O-ring, and it's metric. So it's 1.5 millimeter, 1.5 millimeter, and three millimeter oil control ring. So the only difference in these pistons is the size of the the, the, width, the width, the thickness of those rings. But the H 857s, whatever the number is for the Vortex, cost up around $280. Or somewhere in that neighborhood. Well, the the engine doesn't know the difference in the rings, so I'm using these pistons in the Vortec application because there's the, at least half the cost, and that's one of the tricks you'll learn or you can learn to save money is to buy these pistons. And these pistons, like I say, they they fluctuate wildly in price. Uh, eleven dollars a piston is a pretty good deal. That's six for eleven dollars, be sixty six dollars for a Vortec four point three V six, and that's about as low as I've seen it, $11 a piece. I'm tempted to go buy six more just for because they're so cheap. And even though I don't have it, even though I don't have a currently have a customer for that 4.3, the, the 4.3 blocks right there. That's a 4.3 block that I haven't sold yet, but I got it uh, free. Uh, well, not free, but I paid a small fee for it off of a Facebook Marketplace. But anyway. Um, as I was saying, you can save a lot of money on the pistons if you use the 423 640. Now the 640 is the one recommended for the 4.3 Vortec all the way up to say 2008. So um, if it's okay in the 4.3 Vortec, it's okay in the 5.7 Vortec. At least that's my opinion and that's what I'm going to do. So um, I'm saving a lot of money by using these pistons as opposed to the, the, the metric ring size. So continuing on. Um, once you choose your pistons, this set of piston rings matches or is the ones that go with the uh, American rings, uh, the American ring width, which is, uh, I don't, don't remember the number, but you heard what I said. Um, the part number is E251K30, so that means 30 oversized. Let me see if it gives the size of the rings in here. Um, I don't really, it doesn't show it, um, doesn't see it there. So, no, it doesn't give the size of the rings, but um, I'll put in the comments once I find out what the width of these rings are. So these rings go with these pistons, bottom line. Um, I don't know what the four, this is a V8 set. Um, I don't know what the part number is for the V6 set. I'll put that in the comments once I find out. All right, the next package is your, uh, so that takes care of your pistons and your rings. The next package is your uh, can bearings, and this is 1235M seal power. There's nothing under or oversized about these can bearings. They're stock. Um, the bottom line is every time you take a block to a machine shop and they put it in a cleaner, it's called a hot tank. The uh, hot tank chemicals is both heat and a chemical cleaning. Um, eats the uh, damage of the can bearings, so you have to replace them. So. Um, I didn't knock them out. They're going to come out anyway when the machine shop cleans it up. So um, I told them I have my own can bearing installation tool, which I do, and I'll do a video on that later on how to install can bearings. But these are the can bearings you need for a 5.7 liter V8. They're probably a 5.0 too, but uh, I doubt if I'm going to do any 5.0s unless we want to upgrade to a 5.7. So that's the pistons. Next is the rod, uh, excuse me, the bearings. So your crank bearings. Um, are these right here? So these are Clevite male Clevite, and these are the uh, P series MS 909P 10. The 10 means um, they are undersized by 10, and 
Not sure what that other part number is, but anyway. Um, so these are your, your main bearings, and they're undersized by 10 thousandths because I'm having the crank. Remember, I'm, in my previous video, when I was taking the crank to the machine shop, I showed how the, uh, the journals had some scoring and some grooving on it. So they're going to cut that down by um, one ten thousandth of an inch on both the rods and the main journals. So these bearings will fit the mains. Next, you've got your rod bearings, which again are ten thousandths smaller. So these are CB663P-10, eight, eight, eight of them in the box. And uh, that's for your rod bearings. And like I say, these are the P-series. They're not the aluminum bearings, but the what they call tri-metal. They're the best quality bearing. And uh, so that's 10 under on the mains and 10 under on the rods. Next, I have a uh, timing set, the timing gear and the chain I'm going to replace. Um, that one had a good, good bit of slack in it. Um, I'm trying to get this box open. I'm going to it. There we go. So, hope it hadn't been used before. It looks kind of okay. So, here's the chain. And this is what they call a uh, this is stock factory type factory chain. It's what they call a silent chain. It's not it's not a roller chain. It's what they consider a silent chain. And this is a brand new chain. It's by Melly. Then the gear, the crank gear, is right here. That is your crank gear. Again, it's not a roller chain. It's a silent chain. Whatever that means. And the reason I bought this mainly because it was the lowest, still it's belly, so it's good quality, but it was the lowest price uh, chain they had. And this is the, the uh, cam gear. One thing you notice, the gear is all made of, it's made of all steel. The teeth are steel. And the, uh, it does have holes for lighter weight, but some of your factory gears had a plastic, plastic cap on each of these teeth. And my experience is that the plastic caps at about 80,000 miles start falling off. So you definitely don't want the plastic one. So that's it for the gears. Uh, timing set. Uh, then, uh, if you want a, a top quality uh, timing gear, you can get a roller set. I don't personally think it's necessary. Um, these engines run for a couple hundred thousand miles with this type chain, timing chain. So I don't see any problem with it. Um, next, we have, um, well, this is one of the bigger differences between a marine engine, is the, uh, the uh, expansion plug kit, they call your freeze plug, and the part number is milling MPE-848BR, the BR stands for brass, and so you can see that the the plugs that are made of brass are the ones that go inside the block, and they will have cooling water on this side, the, this side of the plug. And since that water doesn't have any freeze in it or any kind of rust prohibitive uh, preventer, then these won't rust because they're brass. This one is not brass because it's not exposed to water. It's the one that goes in the back of the engine at the end of the cam uh, cam bore. So it doesn't need to be, it doesn't have any water touching it at all, so it won't rust. Again, there's another brass one. These other screw-in plugs go in your oil galleries. There's one knock-in plug. I'm not sure where it goes, but it's not brass, so it doesn't get exposed to water either. So I'm sure it's for an oil gallery somewhere. So anyway, that's the difference between a uh, marine engine and a non-marine engine. That uh, you can, These will be steel in the non-marine uh, kit, but I bought these for a marine. So that's one of the bigger differences in marine. So moving on, um, these are your... Uh, your cylinder head bolts and these are the set is called ES72856 and these are torque to yield cylinder head bolts and I'll do another video on why you uh, why you use why you have to buy one why you have to buy new bolts for torque to yield and also how torque to yield bolts work to give you a consistent clamping force um, and again since you got two heads you need two boxes so you got two boxes of ES 72856 cylinder heads bolts cylinder head bolts and then finally I've got this gasket set it is part number spell pro part number 260 1735 and this is a full engine gasket set for a 5.7 liter Merc, uh, Vortec V8 um, 
This is a uh, not necessarily a marine kit. The head gasket in here is uh, probably not uh, not specifically intended for marine use, but my theory is that you don't need a marine head gasket. Uh, reason being that um, the only part of the head gasket that touches water is the tiny holes. Um, I don't have one handy, but um, the holes in the head. So you've got a hole about that big around where water passes from the block up through the head. So the very edge of that gasket in that hole is the only thing exposed to cooling water. And it's a piece of pressed, uh, I guess, gasket, paper, cork, whatever the material is made of with a, with a permatort coating on it. And uh, there's a minimal amount of uh, metal exposed to that water. So I personally think it's, they make a huge deal out of nothing. So I'm using uh, standard head gaskets, and if the gaskets fail, then bring the boat back and I'll fix it. But a, a marine head gasket is about $50 each, which is outrageous. I think they're playing on people's fears, personally. Um, I'm, I'll tell you what, I'll call Felpro tomorrow and verify that and update this video in the comments if I find something different. But right now, I'm using uh, standard head gaskets. If they're good enough for a car with a... Um, same type cooling system that'll be good enough for marine application. The marine, the water is probably less harsh, so it may be salt water. But then again, uh, the only part of the gasket exposed to the water is a very, very small part of it. So I'll do more research and post in the comments on the outcome of what I find out. And that's about it. Uh, I've already gone 16 minutes with this video, but that's that's the uh, parts I bought so far for the rebuild of a 5.7 marine engine. Um, I haven't talked about lifters or camshaft or um, any of the other uh, heavier metal parts. Um, the camshaft, um, this this engine I'm building is going to replace a 5.0, which is a, as a marine engine. And the cam, um, I'm going to find out if that cam is the same as a 5.7 marine cam. And if the, since it's a roller cam, uh, if it's in good condition, I'm going to reuse it because roller cams really don't wear out. Um, and if they do, the, the uh, lifter takes up the slack. But anyway, um, if it's not, uh, if the 5.0 cam is not the same, I can take a 5.7 uh, cam. Let's see what I do with it. Um, trying to, I'll put it back in. I put it inside the house, keep it from rusting. I cleaned up the, uh, the cam that came out of the 5.7 that I took apart last week. And uh, all the, there's the pistons down on the floor. But uh, by the way, my shop's a mess right now because I just finished tearing down two engines and taking them to a machine shop, so I haven't had time to clean it up but um, and get ready for the next teardown. But um, anyway, the cam has been cleaned, it's put in the house, and if it turns out the 5.0 cam cannot be used in a 5.7, I'll take the 5.7 truck uh, cam and send it to a company called Delta Cams in Washington State, and they can regrind it to Mercury Marine specifications. And then I think they charge like 80 bucks to regrind the cam as opposed to buying a brand new one for a couple hundred, maybe $300. So that's one way you'd save money. That's one of the bigger tips is if you need a marine cam, send it to Delta Cams and they can regrind a trip factory cam and make it to a marine spec cam for you. So uh, as far as lifters go, I'm um, going to reuse the best lifters. Um, I've got a 5.7 and a 5.0. I'm pretty sure the lifters are the same. I'm going to double check that on Rock Auto by checking part numbers. If the part number is the same for the 5.7 and the 5.0, then they're the same. So um, if the lifters, I'll have a set of 16 5.7 lifters and 16 5.0 lifters, and I'll use the best ones from the two engines to put it back together. Put the same thing with the push rods. Um, and that's about all I can think of that would possibly be worn out. Um, so the time of change has been covered, can's been covered, lifter's been covered, push rod's been covered. Um, I think that's about it. So again, these are the parts used for a 5.7 rebuild. And if you have any questions, uh, please leave them in the comments. Thanks for watching.